Okay, so we can go one step further with adding up geometric sequences, okay, and we can basically add them up until infinity, okay? So what we're going to look at now is to find the sum to infinity of a geometric sequence. Okay, we'll start by considering this series, 2 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 plus blah, 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 blah. If you keep on adding more terms, the geometric series will never exceed a certain number, okay? The, basically, the number that we add will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's really, 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 really small. And it basically just won't actually uh, exceed a certain number. Okay, this is called the limit of the series or the sum to infinity of the series. And we can calculate the limit using the formula for the sum of n terms of a geometric series. And the fact that we know that the first term a is 2 and uh, the common ratio is a half. Okay, so the sum to n terms will be equal to yeah, that. And then we shove in the numbers and then we get that. And then if we start replacing n with certain values... Okay, to find the sum of the certain amount of terms, we can start looking at what the trend does. Okay, so n equal to three, the sum would be three point five. N equal to ten, it would be three point nine nine six zero nine, and this number is just not going to get much bigger than that. Okay, sum of the first twenty terms will be three point nine 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 six, nine 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 six. Yeah, so when n gets larger, S n becomes closer and closer to four. So we can say that the infinite series is convergent and has a sum to infinity of four. Okay, we don't have to do it like this every single time though. Um, however, we know that the sum of series converges. And this is very, very similar to when we do in recurrence relations. So because the R number is between minus one and one, uh, minus one and one, similar to when we did um, the limit of a recurrence relation, because of this fact, R is basically uh, between minus one and one, we know that the series will converge. So as much as we may think it, it will converge, as much as we may put numbers in and find a limit, it will only actually be a true limit if r is between minus one and one. So we have to identify that first, okay? So we can get a wee uh, formula and it is exactly the same, uh, obviously with different, just different letters, as the limit um, for a recurrence relation, okay? So the sum to infinity will equal a over one minus r if and only if r is between minus one and one, in other words, the magnitude of R is less than one, okay? So a couple of examples. Find the sum to infinity of each series if it exists, okay? So the first one, first thing we know, obviously, is that the first term is 64 and that the common ratio is 16 divided by 64, or to be honest, you could just do one divided by four. It's much obviously easier, but either way, it simplifies to one over four, in which case, because this number is between minus one and one, then a sum to infinity does exist, okay? And then we can work it out by putting in the previous formula, a over one minus r, which is 64 over one minus a quarter. This would probably be a non-calculator question. One minus a quarter is um, three quarters, in which case it's basically just dividing by a fraction, which is timesing by uh, it flipped. So it's 256 over three. And you can leave your number like that because obviously that's nice and um, exact, okay? For the second one though, the first thing we want to establish is the first term, easy enough, and then the common ratio. But the fact here is that the common ratio is not between minus one and one, in which case a sum uh, to infinity does not exist. To be fair, you probably have to make it a little bit clearer uh, than I've made it there, okay? It doesn't exist because <coughs> three is greater than one, okay? Um, and that's, that's pretty much that. However, obviously you're gonna get some awkward questions involving the sum to infinity as uh, these ones will show. In a geometric series, the sum of the first four terms is 650 over 27, and the sum to infinity of the series is 30. Find the possible values of R, and given the terms are all positive, find the first term A in the series, okay? So we know the sum of the first four terms, so uh, we can kind of pop that straight in. The sum uh, S4 is equal to 650 over 27, okay? In which case, a uh, multiplied by one minus r to the power of four over one minus r is 650 over 27. Um, and we can kind of play around with that a little bit, okay? Um, in which case, yeah, we can end up with something like that. It's not really helping us that much, but it's gonna help us in a second. So the sum to infinity uh, we know is 30. So we can say that a over one minus r, you can see why we've done what we did previously, is gonna equal 30, okay? In which case we can kind of substitute this in to uh, the first aspect. Uh, does my laser pen work? Yeah, it does. This bit here obviously is the same as this bit here, and we know that that is 30. So we can substitute that in, in which case we can say that 30 times by 1 minus r to the power of 4 is equal to 650 over 27. OK, 
Okay, now this is combining all the stuff that we know from the question. It's eliminating um, kind of enough variables that we can actually now solve this. Okay, so we can divide both sides by 30. Uh, we can add one and <coughs> take away, yeah, basically resolve it so it's r to the power of four, um, in which case we can find the fourth root of one minus 65 over 81, which is plus or minus two thirds. Okay, so the fact that we have um, the fourth root and it's an even number, that means that there will be a positive and a negative answer possible. Okay, so if this was r cubed, there's only going to be a positive answer possible, but as long as it's an even number, we can have a positive and a negative solution. And that's where this uh, second part comes in. So given the terms are all positive, okay? Uh, in which case, all the terms are positive in the series, so r must equal two thirds, okay? And if r must equal two thirds, then we can work back to find out what a is, in which case a is just 10, okay? So a nice wee question there, but you can see from these questions, and you kind of establish this a lot throughout advanced higher, that they, there's very niche um, occurrences, I guess, in some of these questions. So it's just, it helps to practice as many of these as possible because something like this, you may never ever see again, you may never ever have to use, but I guess it's just the process behind it um, that you may have to be able to look out for in questions in an exam, okay? Right, this one's a bit random. This one's a bit, um, um, yeah, a bit more niche even than that previous one. So we're going to find a fraction that's equal to the recurring decimal fractions. This doesn't actually say anything about sequences, certainly not sums, nothing about infinity or geometry or anything like that. So um, we basically have to relate this. And this is why I'm not sure this would ever come up in, a, in an exam. Um, but again, we'll go through it. And uh, if it does, then hopefully you'll remember what to do. Okay, so because this is a recurring decimal fraction, we can um, make um, a geometric sequence from it. Okay, so we're going to create our own series from this number, in which case we can rewrite it as something like 0 0.23 plus 0 0.0023 plus so on and so forth. Okay, and that um, obviously series um, will be the same as this recurring decimal fraction, in which case we can start kind of establishing more information about it. So we'd say in this series that a is equal to 0 0.23 and r is equal to 0 0.0023 divided by 0 0.23 which is 0 0.01, in which case we know um, that the sum to infinity does exist um, because 0 0.01 is between minus 1 and 1, in which case um, we can work out what that is, and that would just be the fraction um, that is equal to the recurring decimal fraction, okay? So it would be a, which is 0 0.23, divided by 1 minus the ratio 0 0.01, uh, and it's basically just writing it in its most exact form, in other words, without decimals. So 23 over 99 for this one, okay? That, as I say, I think that is, that is beyond beyond niche, um, but yeah, there's nothing to stop it coming up in a test or exam. Um, so it's worth doing, it's worth, there's a bit of practice in the textbook, but yeah, don't spend ages doing it. Uh, and we'll come back to this next time.